Okay, so I have in my hand two arrows, a red arrow and a blue arrow. And as you can see, these arrows are pointed towards each other. What's that I hear you typing? They're not pointed towards each other? Well, I can assure you they're pointed towards each other. In fact, let me show you what I'm looking at. How about I use a mirror to show you what I can see? You can see that in the mirror, they're pointing towards each other, but outside of the mirror in real life, they're pointing away from each other. So what's going on here? Which way are these arrows really pointing? You can see that the tip of the arrows are touching, but outside of the mirror, the ends of the arrow are touching. Or how about we try it like this? Blue arrow, red arrow. So again, the way I see them is the arrows are pointing away from each other, but I'm sure you're gonna say they're pointed towards each other. Well, how about we try to flip it around and see if we can see from each other's point of view. Okay, here we go. Hey, you're right, they are pointed towards each other. Now we finally agree, the arrows are pointed towards each other. What's that you say? They're now pointed away from each other? Hmm. Well, how about we just try this? Okay, now flip it. Huh? <laughs> okay, I'm turning it, look. Turn. No matter what I do, I can't flip the direction of the arrow. <laughs> there we go. So you can see that when I put a normal arrow with them, right now it looks like the red arrow and the normal arrow are pointing the same direction and the blue one's opposite. But then I just spin it around and suddenly the red arrow and the normal arrow are pointing towards each other and the blue arrow is pointed the same direction as the normal arrow. This is weird. <laughs> So the reason this is happening is because these aren't actually arrows. You can see that just the way that they're angled, it makes it look different depending on what side you're viewing it from. So if you view it from above, it doesn't look like an arrow at all. You can see it a little bit more clear when I put some tape on the side of the arrow. You can see that depending on what angle you're viewing it from, you don't actually see all of this shape here. And so if you're on this side of the arrow, you're always going to see more of this area because it's slanted downward. And so you're going to see that this one looks like it's bigger, so you're going to assume that this is the wide part of the arrow and this is the narrow part. But if we walk around to the other side and view it from over here, now you can see that this looks like it's the wide part of the arrow and this looks like it's the narrow part because this is sloping downward this way and so it seems like that's a wide part. And so you can see that just because of how this is shaped, it makes it look like the arrow's pointing a different direction depending on what side you're on. Now it's clear that something odd is going on here. Now this is what's called a visual illusion. Now we don't only have these illusions with our optical sensory system, but we can actually have them with any of our senses as well. For example, let me show you an illusion that has to do with touch. Okay, now all you need for this is something round and also a crayon or a pencil or a pen or something. So for this one, all you do is cross your fingers. Cross your fingers like this, and then touch the ball right in the crack of the fingers. And what's weird is it'll actually feel like you're touching two balls. And it definitely helps when you don't look at the ball. So look away and touch it, and it feels like you're touching two balls. That is so weird. And also, keep your fingers crossed and you can try looking away and just rubbing a pencil or a crayon in between the two fingers and it feels like you're touching two of them. And also, if you keep your fingers crossed, you can do this laying down, but if you just trace the edges of your finger while not looking with a crayon or a pencil or something, you'll notice that as you go over one of them, it feels like you should be moving it down, but it feels like it's moving up. And what's weird is if it starts to slip out, you don't actually know whether to move it down or up to stay in the crease. Now what's happening here is called perceptual disjunction. And basically what it means is that your brain failed to put together that your fingers are crossed when you're touching these objects. 
So your conscious brain knows that your fingers are crossed, but the part responsible for the perception of touch doesn't know that they're crossed. So if it's this easy to trick our senses, then how can we ever trust our senses? So this idea that we should distrust our senses actually isn't very new. In fact, it was first postulated in 400 BC by the great philosopher Plato. Plato argued that there's a reality outside of our senses, but we're stuck with only what we can perceive through our senses. And he likened this to cavemen watching a play on a wall in a cave. So in this analogy, the cavemen can only see shadows on the wall. They can't see anything else in the real world. All they've ever known is these shadows on the wall. So for example, when they see a shadow of a man on the wall, they assume that's what a man looks like. It looks like this shadow. When they see a shadow of a chair, it looks like a chair and that's what a chair is to them. But they have no idea that there's this outside world that's only casting this shadow on the wall of what they perceive to be a chair or a man or a shadow. So these cavemen grow up believing that these shadows on the wall are the reality. When in actuality, the real stuff is outside of the cave and it's casting these shadows on the wall. The great philosopher Immanuel Kant also said something like this. He said there's two things, the world that is and then the world that appears to me. So basically, we can't know what the world is out there. We can only know how it appears to us. So we can do the best we can to try to experience the real reality that's out there, but what we're stuck with is actually going through our senses in order to perceive it. So we are as though we are these cavemen watching these shadows on the wall, trying to picture what the real reality is out there. But unfortunately, we can't perceive that reality because we're stuck with only our physical senses. And sometimes those senses can be tricked quite easily. So which pill will you take, the blue one or the red one? And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest video is out. And check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab subscription box. Right now we have a vacuum chamber box on sale and also a self-pouring fluid box on sale. And also you can get Extreme Garage Science wherever books are sold. You can check out the link in my description to take you to the Amazon link. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.